Uh, oh, it's daytime. And zombies are dying. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's uh, Stephen the Old World Gamer, and there's zombies burning everywhere. And I'm a zombie, but I'm not burning because I'm a special zombie. I am a special zombie. You can't hurt me. Get away. Get away. Get away. No, oh, hops. Get away from him. Get away. He, wa he wants to touch us. No. Bad touch. So. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Stephanie the Old World Gamer, and welcome back to Quest of the Farlands, the, uh, the series where we are walking towards the Farlands, and the Farlands are 12 and a half million blocks away, which is quite a distance away, uh, from, uh, where, where we want to be, and, uh, we're making our way there regardless, so, um, yeah, and basically at the Farlands, the land goes to, from looking something like this, to all fragmented and jumbly and stuff. And I think what happens, if I was to base a guess off of watching Kurt J. Max recent episodes of uh, Farlands or Bust, is that there is, oh, I, I can barely notice it, but the line is off. It almost looks, no, maybe I'm just tripping myself out. But it looks like the line is off a little bit there, but I don't think it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyways, um, basically, I think uh, once you get to where the Farlands... Oh, I'm going backwards, aren't I? I am indeed. Uh, basically, when you get to where the Farlands are, um, I think that the offset goes off by one entire block. And so, uh, basically, I think the terrain generation more or less says, okay, well... Um, oh, can I, can I do some skipping on this one? Okay, no, I can't skip on this one. Oh, wait, I can. Oh, no, not like that. Oh, I tried to do it again. It didn't work out this time. Going back to our hidey hole. Yay. And, uh, anyways. Uh, I think basically what happens is that it offsets by one block and uh, the terrain generation looks at that and says, Okay, there's already blocks there, even if there isn't. And so it leaves fragmented and opened up sections where there's nothing, but then it fills in, say, part of a mountain where uh, there would be no blocks, and so therefore it's not, you know, uh, generating properly. So th that's what I think is happening. So I could be wrong, but that is my guess, and uh, that and that's what I'm sticking to. I'm, I'm sticking to that guess. That that's it. You guys are gonna have to live with that. And I think we're going on a boat tour. Oh, oh <laughs> boat tours. And uh, don't worry, I do have a topic for this one. It, it was asked of me again, so uh, I, I, I have to get to it this time. And uh, from a viewer, and uh, I, I should know the name of this person. Uh, oh, now I feel bad. Oh, oh. Uh, is it like Nefersetti? I, I think if I say your name wrong, slap me. Slap me, please. I tried to look it up, but uh, unfortunately it didn't. Whoa! Okay, I guess there's lava over there somewhere. Uh, let's not go over there. And I guess it's a short boat tour. But anyways, yes, the topic was brought up by, uh, I, I believe the name is Nefersetti. And uh, the topic was, um, what's better, Star Wars or Star Trek? And uh, they favor Star Trek, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and... Um, don't get me wrong, at one point in time, I was the same way. I never watched that much Star Trek, or, not Star Trek, I didn't watch that much Star Wars, so I was against Star Wars, and I was all like, no, that's a stupid movie, and, you know, didn't give it a chance, and, uh, and once I actually gave it a chance, it was a lot better than I thought. There's a lot more action to it than it is on um, Star Trek, at least from what I remembered. I didn't watch all of the original series of Star Trek yet. I know, I know, I know. Please don't hate too much. I still haven't gotten around to it. I just get to the first couple of episodes, and I'm just like, Jesus, I cannot handle this right now. And, uh, and Jesus says, well, do not handle this right now. Instead, chill out and do something else. And I listen to Jesus because, well, Jesus knows stuff that we trust us don't. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm, I'm not super religious. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but, yeah, I grew up in the TNG era. So the, the original series was long gone off of TV, and I grew up knowing uh, the, the, the Enterprise captain as Jean-Luc Picard, and that's the way it's going to be forever. Uh, he, he's my favorite captain by far. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I've watched all of Deep Space Nine several times, and uh, Voyager several times, and I still think that Picard is the man. He, I don't know, there's just something about him, his... 
There, I mean, there are some things about him that are bad, like uh, his whole, like, oh, I can't be too friendly with people because I'm a captain. It's like, yeah, you got to kind of get over some of that stuff. But, um, but overall, I think Picard is a, a magnificent captain. He, he is a great captain. Captain, my captain. Beverly. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I'm never going to forget that episode. Jesus, that was so funny. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't really pick a side uh, when it comes to um, Star Trek and Star Wars anymore. Uh, I think I prefer to watch Star Trek because I often watch that over... Clone Wars and and uh, and the movies and such, but uh, I have watched the Clone Wars quite a bit as well. But there's just a lot more Trek on TV, so mm -hmm. it was easier, more accessible, and around. And I mean, at first I didn't give Deep Space Nine or Voyager a chance, and eventually I got into those so much, and I loved them. Uh, I love how Deep Space Nine has a lot more action than the other series, and they deal with how you know, the, the Federation would deal with war. And I thought that was pretty cool. And I kind of wish that they'd do a new series already. Jesus, well, I mean, what, what, are you, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? You gotta, you gotta get out a new series soon. Come on, Star Trek. Come on, Roddenberry. I know that you have uh, uh, Gene's daughter. Uh, and, and there's plenty of other people that are still around that can help her out. Uh, believe me, I'm sure there's more than enough people out there who want a new Star Trek. I am one of them. I, I would love to see a new series that goes on for at least eight seasons. Again, that would be superb. Superfluous. Not really. Uh, ooh, that's a very dark cave. Very, very dark cave. Like, that's a monster of a cave right there. Hey. Where are you? Over. Come this way. No, where are you going? Come. Hey. Stop. Where are you going? Yeah, you're real funny. Come here, sit down. Oh, okay, that didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Okay, there we go. That looks like a big dangerous cavern. And we're not going to stray into there, not at all. Come on, Hops, let's go, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, um, like I said, there was a lot more uh, Star Trek on TV, so there was... Um, it was around a lot more than Star Wars, and before they had the new... Before they even had Clone Wars, uh, just the, 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 the miniseries Clone Wars, before they even started the series on, uh, I think it was Spike that started it, maybe? I'm not 100% sure, could be wrong. But anyways, uh, I've watched both of those uh, Clone Wars series, and um, it was a while before those and the movies even came out to begin with. So, I mean, Star Trek had a monopoly on the, on the you know, uh, um, the, the, the fight between the two, between Star Trek and Star Wars. But, I mean, they're so far and different apart that, I mean, you can't really compare them anyways. I mean, Star Trek happens in our part of the universe in our sector people are from earth star wars they're from a galaxy far far away as this as the 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 story goes in a galaxy far far away of course that's where star wars happens so we don't know about anything and that's the cool thing about it is that technically all of that could have actually happened in a galaxy far far away and we wouldn't know anything about it we we don't know if there is a force, and if there are, are meta, what are they called? Ooh, I still have heartburn from today. We had we had some makeshift uh, curry, and uh, we done with ground beef. And ground beef is famous for making me uh, heartburnish. So that and and coffee today. Oh God, that was the other thing. I usually don't drink coffee either, but I opted for some today because the trainee I was with, or who was with me, I should say. Um, prefers to just get a coffee for dinner and I usually don't eat dinner unless I bring it with me which I did today but oh yeah the combination of the two did not sit well in my stomach and now it feels like fire is erupting from my esophagus and I do not enjoy that are, are you serious could you stop playing around I'm, 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 I'm talking to people Ooh, music I love the music so yeah getting back to Star Wars and Star Trek 
like I said, it's hard to compare the two because there's a lot of differences between them. But I mean, there's other things that were different as well. Like, um, now I'm pretty sure there are some type of shielding in Star Wars. But Star Trek, they're all about shielding and such, so they, they know about the shields, you know. I was going to say, do not teleport up here, please. And I guess we will continue the conversation of the two in the morning. And, yeah. And we are back. Awake with a new day, a new bright day. I guess they did not have any type of precipitation in this episode, although, or in this uh, uh, version of the game. Although I do remember, I think there was rain at one point. Hmm, weird and trippy. Um, ooh, there's a creeper over there. Let's not go over and uh, talk to him right now, because we don't need that. We don't need him in our life right now. Right, hops. Okay, he doesn't care. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, something that, uh, I mean, a huge difference, again, between the two is that um, Star Wars had a lot of these almost like supernatural superpowers. Like, <clears throat> if you're on the dark side, you could choke somebody with your mind and your hand outstretched towards their throat. And you could use uh, force lightning to, to actually project lightning, which I assume the, the, the scientific reasoning behind how that would work is that you're using the electrical, uh, I guess the force uh, multiplies the strength of the electrical currents running through your body as, as it is and amplifies it so that you can use it as a weapon. But uh, that's besides the point. Um, it's just kind of, you know, they have a lot of crazy superpowers. Now, don't get me wrong. They kind of did go over that sort of thing in Star Trek. There was a specific um, two races, I believe, and they were hooked on drugs. And uh, the race that was hooked on drugs in Star Trek uh, had the ability to pretty much shock people with electrical currents from within their body. And I really like this cove. I think it's nice. You do too? You like it? You're just going to hop into the... No? Okay. Yep, he's just hopping. He's just hopping. So, we're going to have a few choices of... Ooh, you're down there. I'm going to come with you. Can you stop jumping over... Like, you're bounding over places that are high and you're going to hurt yourself. You're just looking for another pork chop. Don't do it. We need... Ooh, we need more pork chops. So, let's kill some pigs next time we see them. We have to slaughter them in order to have uh, sufficient amounts of food for both me and hops. But uh, yeah, again, I, I know I keep uh, getting off uh, topic a little bit with the, uh, the, the the discussion of Star Wars and Star Trek, but like I said, it is hard to judge between the two. Um, the other thing is that uh, the story in Star Wars was much more concentrated onto a single family, whereas in Star Trek, there were multiples. Uh, I mean, you ha had a lot of crew members who were main characters, and uh, you can't. Really, and there was not only that, but there was also many side characters as well. Just for the fact that, like, you know, uh, like say Voyager, um, Barkley. Actually, Barkley in general in, in, in Star Trek. Barkley was in um, only several episodes and mostly as a side character. He wasn't there as part of the main crew at any point in time. And the same thing, go and that was in TNG. And the same thing goes for um, for when he was in Voyager. He was only there trying to help them during s certain specific episodes. And we're getting away from the burning death. <laughs> and um, and I mean, you know, uh, uh, but I mean, he still held a very specific role in everything that they done, like. When they went and finally in TNG, when he took over the Enterprise as part of the holodeck and gained these powers to take the Enterprise into like another part of the universe or something, like, or, or like the far reaches of our own galaxy or something like that. Either way, it was there was a lot of crazy stuffs happening, and 
And yeah, Barkley was only just a minor character, a side character, but he still was important. He helped Voyager more or less get home, kind of, sort of. Mm, he, again, he, you know what I'm talking about if you've watched the series. Is, 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 is. So, um, but getting to Star Wars, another thing that I will have to admit about Star Wars is I haven't watched the original three movies all that much. Compared to the other ones in the series, I have watched them uh, little to none. Um, I'm pretty sure I actually haven't watched all of um, six, um, episode six or whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of important things there, but I've been wanting to get back to them and I'm probably going to end up watching them sometime this weekend because there's some stuff I'd like to catch back up on. And that's like um, Doctor Who. I've been wanting to get into Doctor Who and I've started with the very first season. When I say the first season, I mean like from the 60s, not from the 90s or the 80s. Stop, stop jumping when you're coming down the hills. <laughs> um... But yeah, I started with the one from like the early 60s and oh god, some of it's bad, but um, it was actually still a good show. From back in the 60s, it was a good show. And, and it just showed you how some TV shows were um, recorded and, and how quickly and easy they, they made a, an episode or a video uh, with, with what little they had. Because I mean, they didn't have all kinds of special effects and computers and everything to do everything for them back in those days, so... They had to rely on other things, like dropping a figurine down into a well to make it look like a man fell down into a shaft. Uh, it's, <laughs> that's one of the funniest parts uh, that I can remember from the uh, first season. Would you stop? He's going to push me off. I know he will. You're so nosy. Yeah, I know. And wow, there's even more just generating there. But yeah, so I'm guilty of not watching all the uh, first three movies, or last three, however you look at the... Well, I mean, going by timelines, the last three movies. And wow, that's a huge mountain shelf kind of thing there. That's crazy. And a couple of floating parts there. It's actually superimposed in front there. But, uh, but yeah, this is a very nice looking spot as well. <sighs> so, moving forward. Um, but I did enjoy all of the first three movies going by timeline uh episode one two and three and i know a lot of people don't like episode one but i enjoyed darth maul uh what he brought to the table how they incorporated him later into the clone wars uh, some of it was a bit stupid uh i'm not gonna lie uh some of the, some of it was a bit crap for the storyline for darth maul and the clone wars but for the most part it was pretty good it wasn't it wasn't horrible but uh it was, it, it was good and uh uh, well, another thing is this whole lightsaber thing. I mean, that that in itself is a whole other uh, thing to talk about on its own. Because, I mean, it's just crazy how they work, how they stay together, how they are put together. Um, you know, oh, didn't make it. Oh, I miffed. Miff? Missed. Um, but, yeah, um, they didn't have anything quite like that in Star Trek, but um, they did have phasers and, I mean, obviously means of using concentrated energy for energy weapons, a lot like, you know, Star Wars had the same type of thing. And uh, let's get a boat. I took a, the one I didn't want to take. I know, it's OCD. Ha, bizarre. Do, 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 do. I can't sing any more than that because then they'll be like, give me some money. And I'm like, no, get away. Um... <laughs> But yeah, uh, they, they both have energy weapons, which I guess that's something that at some point will be a thing and will be huh, good and bad. It all depends on what type of energy form they, they decide to go with for energy weapons, I guess, in, in life, if that ever happens. And, uh, and how easy it is to, you know, replicate the procedure uh, of making one of those, you know, what, whatever you want to call it, energy cells or whatever it is that it takes to, to make these energy weapons work. So, um, and they don't really talk about that all that much in, in those series. You know what? We're going to go over here and we're going to kill some pigs. And Hops is going to make the boat explode. No? 
Jesus, for a second, I thought I left him behind. Come on with me, Hops. Come on, Hops. Let's go kill some pig. Oh, look at all these piggies. Get them. What are you doing? Get the pig. Get. Why are you shaking? Go get the pig. You no, know you're not getting that. Go. Whoa. Okay. Did you s I don't know what you did, but... I'm so confused as to what happened just then. Yeah, I know. We got more pigs over here. Kill them. Get them. Yeah, he dropped two. Oh my god! Assault in the water. Oh, wow. He just went up and bit his face off. Way to go, Hops. Wow, we got lots of pork chops. Get up here, buddy. Okay, fine. I'll give you I'll give you food in the morning. You can have breakfast. Some, some bacon. Bacon to make the morning better. I don't know if that's a real breakfast wake-up morning song thingy thing. But uh, it is now. It is now. It's okay. Let's put down our bed. Let's go and throw out random feathers. Being particular about my stuff again. And let's go to sleep! Uh, sunset. So yeah, again, I know I haven't really said much in regards to actually making the two go against each other. And uh, like I said, it's hard, but... Um, Hmm, what else can be said? I said I was going to give you food in the morning. Come here, sir. Come and get some come and get some bacon. Bacon. What? Yeah, there you go. You want another piece? Come here. Come here. Hey. There you go. We good now? Let's keep going, buddy. I think he fell down that hole before, which probably took out a lot of his health. And we have more pigs right here, but we're going to leave this one alone because we're going to keep boating this way and hope that we don't reach land in five seconds. Yes, I know, that's that's swim time for you. You love swimming. Um, the way that... Um, the way that they can jump around to different um, parts of the galaxy in Star Wars is a lot different. It seems like if they wanted to, they can go from one end to the other kind of thing if they really needed to or had to. Whereas, obviously, in Star Trek, they're a little bit more believable where it's like, yeah, we have warp technology, we can go at a certain speed, faster than light, and it gets us, you know, from point A to point B at, at this much time or, you know, this many days or weeks or however. Whereas with Star Wars, it seems like, Oh, someone's stranded on this planet, and then they're all like, oh, okay, we'll just jump into your little spaceship, and we'll just hop out over there in, like, five minutes. It's like, wait, what? Like, I guess they got these, like, special kind of jump drive type things. I don't know what it is. Um, again, I am not as up on Star Wars, so I'm not trying to compare the two or, or, or actually make them be against each other because I don't know enough about Star Wars to make a viable... Um, contribution to the argument between the two but I, I'm, I'm just stating things that I see in both um, it seems like um, a lot of um, although they don't they don't really talk about uh, uh, people being sick too much in Star Wars they always seem to always have a cure it's just getting the cure to someone because so and so is blocking the path or this guy or that person is doing this uh, and you know you, you have that all the time but in Star Trek there, there's still incurable things there's still things that can cause you know regular illnesses and sicknesses and stuff and I don't know <sighs> um I like a lot of the ship designs for Star Trek a lot more than the Star Wars stuff some of the Star Wars stuff is alright a lot of people seem to really enjoy the look of the Millennium Falcon. I myself, not a huge fan by any means. Um, it just, it just, it doesn't. Mm. It, 
could be better. Oh, okay, if I, if I punch my boat, it just destroys. Destroys itself. Um, yeah, no, I don't like the look of the Millennium Falcon. Uh, I do like the look, the look of some of the other ones. Uh, the X-Wings look nice. Um, they resemble a lot to me, or at least one looks like the other. Um, a lot like the Raptors, I think that's what they were called, from um, Battlestar Galactica. And I mean, that was at a long time ago too, like the original Battlestar Galactica. So I don't know what they looked like back then, but <laughs> on the newer series, they looked a lot like X-Wings to me now. I could be terribly wrong on that as well, so... Um, But yeah, now I'm getting into other uh, space type <laughs> series as well. But uh, I don't want to get into Battlestar Galactica as well, Jesus. Because um, that's, again, a thing its own as well. It's very humanoid. Uh, well, considering that they're all based off of the, the human population, or at least that's where the story, I think, went. They all returned back to Earth to find that it was just a wasted slumland and that them and the, the Cylons, spoiler alert, were both from Earth and originally came from Earth together and were split up or something along those lines, I believe. Again, I, I just don't have time to watch those series over and over and over again. I wish I had all the time back. College ate away at a lot of that viewing time because I was out pursuing ladies and having fun times with partying and such. And oh god, I could tell you tons and tons of stories about partying, that's for sure. My god. Uh, but uh, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Star Wars and Star Trek. And um, But yeah, I've always preferred Star Trek. I don't know, it was... I mean, it did have a definitive kind of storyline, kind of, like TNG kind of did. Voyager had them, you know. Oh, we're last in the Delta Quadrant, now we gotta get home. I mean, that was their story. Deep Space Nine, oh, I'm Ben Sisko, I don't know why I'm the Emissary. And then he finds out why he's the Emissary, and why he's there in Bajor, and they have to, you know, push the Dominion back through the Gamma, back to the Gamma Quadrant, or, you know, uh, at least make it stop, or, you know, make the war stop, and that was their story, but in TNG, they didn't really have a solid story, they tried to wrap one up after, as if um, they were being judged by what they were doing the entire time, but I mean, that's so, like, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it was. It almost seemed like it was a last minute type thing. They're like, you know what? It, we can say this because it works, and I mean, no one would have realized that. Nobody would have realized that it was from like the very first time that you know Star Trek started up that they were just being judged the entire time by Q. But uh, I don't know. Again, it's. <sighs> That's all I can say about that. <laughs> um, but no, I, I've always loved Star Trek. I've always rewatched Star Trek more than almost any other series because it's a good series. I mean, it has a lot of things that we we as a people have to think about. And oh God, please don't fall down. That that's something that um, I wanted to talk about as a topic on itself. Well, I might be able to cover some of it now, but. Uh, Basically, us as a people, like humans, like, we're at a point in time right now where we should be over all this, uh, and like, I think I kind of mentioned it before, this whole, oh, you're this religion, so I hate you, or you're this skin color, so I hate you, and it's like, why? A person is a person. They have a body, they have a mind, a consciousness, you know, they have emotions and thoughts and contributions that they can be making. And no person is any better or any worse than any other person, uh, you know. And you may say things in life to other people that are not nice at some point in time. I've done it. I know I have. Plenty of times. I've done it recently to the guy who, who screwed me on my banner and pricing and stuff and such. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't think he's any better or worse than me. I mean, it's just the way I felt at the time. and It's a way of expressing yourself with your ways of words and 
people try and uh, twist them around as much as they can, of course. But, um, or at least some people can. But, more or less, we're, we're all just people. We're all living on a world that we, we, we've, you know, got to live on all together. Whether you like somebody or not. You know, there, there's no point in hating, you know. And I think, in order for us to get over this whole skin color, stereotyping, uh, and, and racial, religious kind of crap that people have with each other, is we actually do need to come have an alien race come here and, and make us realize that, you know, e even if it's, hey, we want to live on your planet now, so we're going to attack you. If that's what it took to make us all think, like, you know what, um, I'm too worried about living tomorrow to worry about what religion you are right now. Because right now, defending the place that we live on is more important than hating you for a stupid reason that I'm supposed to believe in. I'm sorry, but a lot of these religions are based off of like, oh, well, so-and-so wrote this book about this person or this thing, you know, this many years ago. It's like, you weren't there. Like, you don't know. And, okay, as a definitive Christian God thing, I guess, uh, God is supposed to be ever forgiving and such. So, if that's the case, if you didn't believe in him, he would forgive you and everything would be good and fine. And that's the way I think every other uh, uh, religious figure should be like. Whether it is or not is another question, but that's not for me to decide. Um... Where are you? Are you coming over? Okay. I'll give you your own. There you go. This is going to be a special hole. Um, I've been building them down a lot recently. And... But yeah, I think we more or less need, need to be attacked by other aliens in order for us to smarten up and get over the fact that uh, we're all just people and we should all just be able to get along. <clears throat> but uh, I, I will go into that at, at another point in time so that, uh, I, I, or maybe that kind of covers it at the same time, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I was going to do that for an entire episode but uh, I guess that won't be happening now. And yeah, but I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't go into too much, like I said, verses on the Star Wars and Star Trek. I, I, I mentioned a lot of things that I like about both and uh, what I found kind of different or weird. And again, it, it's something that can uh, be discussed in length. Um, throughout several episodes. I guess what, what I should ask is maybe we should get into different topics about each, which would probably make it a little bit easier for me as well, because uh, like I said, it's hard to, to put one against the other because there's so many different topics in itself and so on and so forth. Give me that. And there we go. Pick up this workbench and me done. So, um, I might as well pick those up. I'll have to sp spit them out <laughs> tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the, the day after, I guess. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Quest of the Firelands. If you did, please leave a like and some comments, some all that good stuff down below. If you're new, subscribe, because well, you, then you can keep watching more and not have to forget about it. And keep coming up your feed, and you're like, mm, I'm hungry, give me some feed. And YouTube will be like, oh, I've got some feed for you, and you're watching these videos. And, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting way too excited. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Good night. <laughs>